Jeff. Yes. Freaks. Yeah, yeah. Maho. Yeah. And Terrence. My eyes. <laughs> the goggles think <they> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you sounded like. My eyes. The goggles they do nothing. <laughs> got the got the giddies. <laughs> oh god. That makes for some of the most fun gameplay when you're sleep deprived and half delirious. Mm. You would think that we were recording this at like seven in the morning. This is actually afternoon. Like so 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 seven right, in Jeff. the morning. <laughs> First of us. It is but Sunday. It is like my one consistent day off where I get to sleep in and no one bothers me. <laughs> now we bother you. Yeah, now this is bothering me. No. <sighs> Well, hopefully in a few weeks, I can convince the job to close Sunday nights and I can just work Sunday mornings. And then we can record Sunday nights. At well, Sunday afternoons. Time. Late afternoons. Evening, if you will. Evening. <laughs> after brunch. Before lunch. You're already after brunch. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Most brunches in Charleston don't start till eleven thirty. So I was gonna say, if you this is after brunch for you, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, you're doing way too early. early. <laughs> I thought brunch was like ten thirty. That's what that's it opens. Breakfast. Uh, yeah, that's breakfast lunch. That's what brunch means. Uh, I thought brunch meant drinking a lot of mimosas with a bunch of dumb. <laughs> it also means that some circles. Well, that's that's yeah, a regional time. thing. <laughs> It's more like uh, a liner if you're starting at noon. Lupper? Nobody Lupper? likes the way that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like something you go to a clinic to get looked at. <laughs> oh, I got the Lupper bad. <laughs> Lupper real bad here. I don't know. Did you have the garbage plate for brunch? I did. That causes did. a Lupper. <laughs> yep. That's how you get Lupper. <laughs> can't decide what I want for brunch because I'm so drunk. Well, here's an option that has all of our shit smushed around on a plate. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Leftovers. Looks the same going in as it does going out. Uh-huh. <laughs> we need that's, garnish that's, on that's this chili. garbage plate. Yeah. I'm not I'm not sure what a garbage plate is per se. I'm, I'm picturing it's mostly cottage cheese. <laughs> Well, it's, it's different everywhere. Some of the Ugh. places call it a messy plate or a garbage plate. Where I work, it's tater tots covered in hamburger and bacon and mushrooms and chorizo and cheese and <laughs> gravy. And it's just it's a it's just this pile of just like nah, you figure it out. That's what the, that's what the plate says. Here, here's a lot of flavors. You figure it's it your, out. It's your favorite flavor, brown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, did you put a little red bell pepper on top to take away from the brown? You did. Okay. Well, you're trying. I guess. I mean, Not you responsible for up, after effects. A, yeah, cover it in a sausage gravy for a little. But nice. But nice relish. <laughs> Three different types of brown sausage and top of tater tots. I actually made mm-hmm. sausage gravy um, that I was satisfied with the other day. Normally, I'm always like, mm, "This isn't right," but uh, it's hard I, uh, to get right. No, it, it's easy to get right as it turned out. I just saved some bacon grease from a, a few days before and made that. Use that Are for the gravy. Always saving your bacon grease. Don't you have a large metal tin just with pounds of bacon grease in it in your fridge? I look like I'm from the '40s. I mean, a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sound like so, you're that's from what the I was going to say. You don't look like it, but you sound like it. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> I've got a large metal tin full of bacon grease in my fridge. Mm. Actually, you I don't know. If you, Lucas are really getting me steamed up. <laughs> <laughs> if you put um, a bindle on a stick on Terrence's shoulder, he does look like he's from the forties. <laughs> what? It's like I'll stick your bindle, don't you? <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> I mean, that's 
it's a man. Car- it's the carpet bagging implications I don't like. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you look like a man who's well versed in the hobo assemblage. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I can read hobo signs. I was just <laughs> picturing you at the end of the, the old Hulk TV show with the music playing. <laughs> <laughs> but the bag just has bottles of gin sticking out of it. <laughs> 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 coming for a ride. <laughs> the sad clankety clank as you walk down the street and dollar store flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a pineapple Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> and shorts. <sighs> oh. Oh. No, no, I thought we'd really... be nicer for a good campaign, but I guess not. <laughs> it's a holdover. It's just a holdover. This is just the it's first episode where we're going to be mean to each other. <laughs> And then we'll be, uh, once we hey, get back we start in the feel of it. It's the reason I keep Kevin in games, is so they have someone else to pick on. Uh, <laughs> there's always got to be one. <laughs> we can pick on Noob instead. Get rid of him. Uh, he likes it, though. He likes the attention. It's sad. Who, Kevin? Uh, no, Noob. noob. Uh, <laughs> so for our listeners out there, Parents we don't love have it. decided to go away from our necessary evil campaign and start a good campaign called Unnecessary Evil. <laughs> and uh, that's what we're supposed to be starting today. Yeah. But uh, well, for the record, we'll get to it sooner or later. Yeah. It is still going to be on our Raiders of the Lark RSS feed. So you don't have to do anything to change anything. And if you're listening to this, you already are aware of that. Because right. It popped up on your feed. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing you have to change is your heart or die. And it's oh, yeah. a nice tie-in to our evil campaign, which you will hear as we progress today. We we kind of hit um, I don't I don't know if I want to call it a, a wall, but we we hit a natural pause in our we hit evil a wall campaign. of money, and you didn't know what to do. Let's just be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's this rare in any campaign I've ever been in where where they go, okay, so you've got basically enough money to 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 buy a town. What do you want to do? And you're just like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Have our boss call us and tell us to get back to work, I guess. I <laughs> yeah. If he could find us after we we're on vacation for so long. Yeah. Vacation in another mean, plane. Too. We've played that campaign for almost those characters now. for yeah, almost two years. It's nice to get to some change up in there. And also, you know, there there is a time where being evil kind of loses its luster for a little bit. You know, you, you want to be a, a quintessential good adventuring party every so often where you're like, oh, we're here to save people and kill monsters instead of we're here to make money and shit on each other. Yeah. So I, I re-listened to our episode, Villains Walk Into a Bar to get ready for for this episode, for this the start of this one, because this is the one that takes that one off. God, I had fun that night. <laughs> I had a fucking blast, and I was just like, man, I miss Valric. <laughs> he had a lot of character. I know, but also, you hated it, and it was just like, we had a lot of debuffs <laughs> going on, and it made all the combats really long and sloggy. So, uh, but yeah. Well, I mean, I... Wall, of, wall of sickness. I had already found a solution to that, but um, no, you hadn't. I had. I just lowered all the hit points of the monsters and increased their damage and to hit. <laughs> mm. Well, what you you say that like it was Valric's fault that the combats were slow and sloggy, and then oh, when you blame me, in your Inquisitor. <laughs> they were still slow and sloggy. No, I'm not blaming you. I'm saying this this is a system that is it is designed for intricate combat. Oh, and the wrong intricate combat system. makes for slow combat. I am the wrong DM for this system. <laughs> when I say slow and sloggy, I, what I meant was is all the bad guys suck now, so there's no threat. Really. Yeah, I know. All the bad guys became bulk and skull about two rounds in. Yeah. Oh, they're all nauseated, so you know, now it's just clean up. <laughs> Which is fun here and there. But it's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm now concerned that Ter- now we're going to go the other way because Terrence is going to go after us playing our our evil campaign, where we pretty much were pretty good badasses. Oh, we're yeah. now starting with this group, and Terrence is going to like 
oh, they can handle this. And we're like, oh my God, <laughs> what are you doing to us? We haven't even developed teamwork yet. We don't know what each other does. <laughs> I made an old we're, man. He's literally an old man. <laughs> we're third level, damn it. Oh, it always feels like a bad idea to me, but what? That old, that taking on an aged character. Yeah, no, it's not good. Uh, but I don't, I don't mid max, Jeff. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've never Actually, seen someone. I've never seen one not take the old man thing to to number crunch fucking spell casting. That's all people do it for. <laughs> well, you take a minus three. So when you take the old template, you take a minus three to all your physical stats, and you get a plus two to all your mental stats. Mm-hmm. So what it's definitely trade off. Yeah. What do you What do you want to be as an Asimir? And where they got the uh, there's a spell that you can get every day that makes you like um a younger generation so say you're middle-aged where yours goes up so your fi- your physical stats go down one category and your middle stats go up one category this actually removes the physical stat going down mm. that sounds a lot like you- min maxing to me i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> optimization where did that come from i don't know what you speak of what is what is me and Max? Who is this? <laughs> I don't know him. It's a miniature version of Mad Max from Thunderdome. I've, I've told you before. I come up with my concept, then I do everything in my power to make it the most powerful thing within that concept. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just makes sense to me. <sighs> All right. Um, I suppose we should start. You know. If that's your thing. Can we just talk about brunch for another hour? I don't want to talk about brunch. I don't, I'm, I'm, I just woke up and I'm kind of hungry. So mm-hmm. let's, let's not talk about brunch. You want the rest of my sausage biscuit? We see a Your vision of Trader's Fork. <laughs> I'll put it in the mail. Smoke. Jeff's going to play the game whether the rest of us are or not. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's gonna force the narrative. I was gonna post my sausage biscuits. <laughs> the sun has sweet. come over the uh, over the horizon. It's morning in America. Right, uh, well, let's zoom way out, way the fuck out. Uh, welcome to the Emerald Vale, a valley. That has been the site of many contentious wars down through the years. The most recent, however. Uh, gave way to a long period of peace. 80 years ago, the tyrant that once ruled this area was overthrown by uh, a group of crusaders that took over the valley, which incidentally happens to be a major trade route, which was good for them, but also freed the local people of the the depredations of um, a wicked wizard and his uh, army of orcs and other monsters and that is the story of Greenvale um, it's the one everyone knows uh, the people who've grown up here or have lived in the area for a long time don't really think much about it anymore because to be honest all that was about 80 years ago there's been a prolonged period of peace the, the, the area has had time to prosper everything has grown up and all the signs of the the villainy of the past are now ivy colored or ivy covered relics for the most part. However, this year has been an odd one. A lot of dark omens, none darker than the entire uh, than the entire town of Traders Fork catching fire. In the county of Greenvale not really prepared for the things coming along. But here you are, standing, uh, where, wherever you happen to be, wherever you happen to wake up. Either you fought the fires, you were unconscious because of the, uh, the riots, or when the monster rampaged through, you were caught unawares, but still spared, ultimately, the, the death that it inflicted on so many others. Smoke and mist cloud the cloud everyone's vision the, the next day in the town of Traders Fork people are still 
uh, moving through the town, some of them carrying buckets of water, bucket brigades are still going on, trying to just put out the last of the fires. And you can see that there, the, the town has gathered in the, uh, the central square. The vice mayor, since the mayor had passed away in the night, trying to calm everyone and assure them that the, uh, the, the threat was passed. You see the town guard, what's left of them, have dragged what appears to be an enormous rotting hand into the center of town on a cart. A n- big, vile, disgusting. It looks like it had been rotting for months. It was dried. It was, it's also covered in blood, townspeople's blood. And as you come into the square and hear the, the, the vice mayor speak, the, you get a, an unfamiliar sensation of dread. Uh, Greenvale County is a place of peace and a place of solace and, and a welcome respite on the long road. But maybe that's changing. Maybe something's sinister at work. Tell me. Ulfborg Grazit, how did you spend the previous evening? Well, you rotted one of my old but my flashbacks. <laughs> well, if you want to read it, feel free. No, no, no. Handy got away in my backstory. <laughs> <laughs> After killing children. Um, but we're good now. Yeah, I did homework. I wrote a story. Do I want do you want me to read that? That's sure, nice. that's, that's, that's close. <clears throat> okay. Um, Wolfboard Grizzet is a halfling uh, druid and he's very old but here we go Ulf has spent most of his years traveling the woods of the world him and his falcon Talik making do with small game and berries for food and thick forest canopy for shelter he brought peace to many of the wilderness helping a pack of wolves relocate for better hunting grounds a bear family to find new cave to hibernate in when there's flooded and so on. Shailen is his goddess, but her messenger is the spirit of an Agatheon. The Agatheon would whisper to Ulf of lands in need. And to his surprise, the spirit asked him to keep watch over a small, mostly human town one day. For nearly a year, Ulf watched this town from the woods, getting to know its people from afar. He began to wonder what it was he was supposed to do to protect them. Eventually, he began to come into town. He made friends, traded furs and berries for money, and began to indulge in things towns had that the woods did not. Mead, soft beds, and the music of taverns. His watchful eye slipped more and more with the passing of time. One night, he dove a little hard into strong drink. The music was particularly uplifting and the crowd particularly welcoming that night drinking games left him all but unconscious as the night swindled on. He didn't hear the warning from the Agatheon or see the strangers enter the tavern. A loud crash roused Ulf from his slumber on the par table and he bleary-eyed looked around in panic. People were screaming. Chaos loomed. He stumbled for the door just in time for it to swing violently open onto him, throwing his small halfling form across the tavern and head first into a hard oak surface. Darkness took him as the last thing he saw was a monstrous giant undead hand crawl into the tavern. He awoke to Talik, pulling on his grain beard hairs, dust and ash choking his breath. At least she was alive, but the despair was evident in the air. The tavern was a mess. A large table was resting over Ulf, his legs pinned and bruised underneath. He could see out into the morning from where he lay and saw the bodies, the destruction and his failure. All right. Um, let's see. How about you, Wraith? How did you spend the previous evening? Uh, tell us a little about yourself and how did you spend the previous evening? Sorry. <laughs> Not a problem. So first of all, the scene goes to the top of a building and you see a raven. And a raven looks at you and starts speaking and goes, Wraith was once a member of an adventuring group that roughly 10 years ago got wiped out when exploring an old ruin. He escaped the same fate by fleeing into the wilderness, and as he lay bleeding out, he was discovered by an old gnome bringing supplies back to his bar in Trader's Fork. Dink 
Arbuckle, the proprietor and barkeeper of the Fairy's Fire Tavern, saved the dying Wraith and brought him back to Trader's Fork to recover. As Wraith recovered, he blamed himself and was haunted by the loss of his friends and companions. He decided to settle down instead of returning to the life of an adventurer. In appreciation for the gnome saving his life, Wraith decided to stay in Trader's Fork and started working at the tavern. Over the past 10 years, he has worked at the tavern as a cook and brewer. He also sometimes has been known to do some freelance detective work. Roughly a week ago, Wraith was sent to a seaside town east of Trader's Fork to pick up some supplies for the tavern. He returned to find the town in ruins, his friend killed by some undead abomination, and the tavern demolished. And as we look back, we see the raven fly down off the roof and land on this elf gunslinger shoulder and then just merge right into his back. And as he merges, you notice he didn't seem to have a shadow before, but now he does. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, That's Uh, creepy. You're (laughs) creepy. (laughs) And essentially, uh, basically Wraith just rode into town early this morning and seen all the devastation and stuff. Uh, Fidelis Delamar, what are you doing in town? How'd you spend your previous evening? Um, I did not prepare a story, so I'll improv one now. That's fine. Um, Fidelis Delamere is a inquisitor of Shaylin who years before had been prompted by the hierarchy of the church to head out to Trader's Fork to become the itinerant caretaker of the Temple of Shaylin in this mostly human town. Uh, while there, he took up those duties because he, he loves his goddess. She is, uh, everything that is beautiful in the world comes from her. So he appreciates her. But he also took up uh, the duties of freelance monster hunting and uh, occasional mediator in the town if necessary. But mostly he spends his time in the Temple of Shaylin. The night of the horrific massacre that occurred, he responded as quickly as he could to the alarms, to the screams. And even though he was outmatched, he, he picked up his, his blade of whispers, his goddess's favorite weapon, the glaive, and charged into combat, doing his utmost, nearly dying in the attempt. But uh, he feels... Like, he gave as much as he could. He was rendered unconscious by the giant crawling hand, but um, he just hoped that he did everything in his power to assist this town that has given him a home for the last three years. All right. And last but definitely not least, we have uh, Ryan Drennan. Ryan Drennan, what happened to you last night? Well, to talk about what happened last night, we have to go back just a bit about about her. Ryan is a human female. She grew up on the outskirts of Trader's Fork on a small farm. Um, Anybody from the town will know that everywhere she went, uh, a young halfling boy was right there beside her. They grew up together farming and playing. And as they grew older, they fell in love. And the previous night, they were celebrating their engagement. They drank, they danced. She noticed uh, an oddly beautiful woman staring at her most of the evening, which was weird, but whatever. Okay. They drank, they danced, and then after after a time, something something came over her. She felt different, and she noticed that he'd always looked at her 
with nothing but adoration in his eyes. But at this moment, it was disgust, and she wondered what was going on. Uh, apparently, she had taken on the, the visage of a pig, and she didn't know why, but um, sort of changed their relationship. They argued a bit, and as the, as the bar was closing, they were outside sort of making up. They decided, you know, we'll talk about this in the morning. And she went her way, he went his. And she's, as she turned around to, to catch one last glimpse of him before the night ended, she saw a hand scoop him up and squish him. No oh, Lord. And so, you know, she fought the hand. She fought, she was one of the first people to, to take up the fight against the hand. Eventually, the hand was subdued, but her halfling love was no more. Oh, dear. So, yeah, that's, that's Ryan's story. Poorly told story. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Um, so in the, in the, in the, in the morning light, the town is in, in ruins, not, not, not necessarily physically. Most of the buildings survived the attack. Even the fires didn't do as much damage as you might've suspected, but, um, psychologically, everyone in town is just utterly wrecked by what went on. There is a small crop of women and girls that have been afflicted with the same curse as you, Ryan. I, there, the, the, the tavern was utterly destroyed. Um, there are many a dead friend and dead guard, and the mayor himself was also killed. There also was rumors that werewolves were spotted in the night. And so a lot of people are fearful about that. So when the vice mayor uh, finishes his speech and steps down off the makeshift podium that it was constructed out of shipping crates, the, uh, the, he, the people of the town begin to disperse and go about the various jobs being um, asked of them by the local officials, either uh, repair work or moving debris or collecting the dead. The, individually, all of you are um, approached by a member of the town guard and asked to come to the vice mayor's, um, or rather the town hall, where the vice mayor has set up uh, basically his command center for recovering from all of this. You, Rain, in particular, um, when, once you... I don't know if you've been hanging around the other young ladies that seem to be afflicted with the same curse as you, but um, they know you were spotted fighting the hand, then you survived. So you were you were asked to come to the meeting as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Oathboard, you see people being asked to the uh, to the. To the to the town hall and um, you feel you feel compelled to go they aren't you don't specifically get asked they don't even really notice you 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 look like a soot cover, soot, soot covered wine bibber in the morning light <laughs> even your even your hawk seems a little frazzled but um you you're your guilt at not being able to stop what had happened last night compels you to to head up there. Definitely. Um, Wraith, you just arriving in town and are, are, are greeted with relief. They're like, oh, there you are. What happened? Where have you been? You're asked to the town hall since you are one of the local officials here. And I, right. I go... I actually will go. Where's a, lo a, a, a local, a local um, troubleshooter here. I'm like, where's Dink? <laughs> I have not seen him yet. What is going on here? 
the uh, the, the the person who talks to you doffs their hat and says, "I'm afraid they didn't make it. The tavern is uh, it suffered a lot of damage." Oh God. Uh, Fide- Fidelis, you are as as a as a basically a. Uh, by this point, pretty well-known member of the community as, as a person that guards the or t- maintains the local um, temple. Or temple. Uh, I, I would also say that yeah. um, being a caretaker of the Temple of Shaylin, I could also probably perform services. Yes, once you were once mass, once you're uh, taken away from like whatever whatever small amount of healing you're able to do. I don't know if you're actually able to do any healing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whatever small amount of healing you're able to to accomplish that day, uh, you were also invited back to the town town hall. Uh, I would imagine I, I would be stabilizing everybody I could. And uh, I started with a wand of cure light wounds. I will gladly give up ten charges if uh, that will save some lives. Um, Terrence, so I can heal all. So, all right. Um, I took a, just to let you know, and this is something kind of important. You might need to make a decision on this. All right. I took the cantrip called Minor Cure. It will cure one point of damage per round. Uh, I believe Pathfinder uh, kind of excised that. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's part of a reason. thousand and one. I know, but I, 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 I I'd, rather, like it, I'd rather let me, just, let me just say why. Okay. Make a case, and, you, and, and that's why, and that's why I brought this up. <sighs> my my only argument for it is it will cut down on all the downtime, but it still takes a long time to cure someone back. So if it's going to be like in a dungeon where you where we're in constant danger, we would not want to use it all the time. We'd want to use regular cure, cures, but this would cut down on. Oh, we ran out of healing. Let's rest again. Oh, we ran out of healing. Let's rest again. Where. As long as it's, we got time to, to do stuff, we can do it, but it won't cut into we're always needing more cure power because lo- we don't have a true cleric with us. You don't have a true cleric with you, but there are literally three classes here that can cast cure spells. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, I mean. Jeff, Jeff, I'm just going to have to veto it. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. All right, thank you. And I'll change it. All right. Thank you. I, actually, I believe all four of us can cast cure spells. Yeah, so please. far, it looks like I only have lay on hands. That's fine. That's yeah. still <laughs> this is better than cure. <laughs> it's yeah. actually it's, it's, in many cases better than cure, <laughs> especially for yourself because you can do it as a swifty. swift action. Yeah. I did not realize that all of us were making a heal bot. <laughs> I didn't make a heal bot. I wouldn't call him a heal bot. I mean, but. I was worried about myself yeah nah. <laughs> so i think i think we've got healing covered yeah, yeah. sorry sorry jeff I, i'm just gonna have to veto it well that's fine i mean i i was prepared for that that's all right mike uh, that's yeah. the reason why i wanted to ask you before we got going good it completely negates the on. it completely negates even needing stabilize as a can true and it does it basically gives you unlimited healing so i, I mean it's, it's if cool you've too. got time yeah. You got time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd seen I'd seen some other rule sets where like, oh, you can't heal back past half your hit points, and some other stuff that they'd come up with. But, yeah, I like the one where it's like you can use this on one person once per day. You know, since it's a cantrip, like it's like stabilized but better, but you can only do it once. Right. Uh-huh. But then it's hardly worth knowing as one of your. Uh, infinite times per day can. <laughs> so, right. mm. Well, unless you're in a situation wouldn't. like that. unless you're like an like army that. medic, you know. Yeah. But um, where was so, it? Sorry. Do you want me to spend some of my wand of cure light, or will stabilize be enough to save some lives? Stabilize will be enough to save lives. Okay. And I also have a healing kit, so I can also go around heal. All right. Not magical healing first aid i would imagine i used plenty of uh self-healing while i was fighting so i'm probably kind of useless when it comes to healing right now okay the um 
though, however you are called, either by guilt or by the town guard or just by curiosity, you all arrive at the at the town hall where you see there are a bunch of other locals that have uh, skill in fighting or healing or knowledge or, or knowledgeable types um, just milling around. These are basically your your locals that have a little bit of adventuring under their belt. Uh, you're amongst about 20 people in total. And the, um, the vice mayor says, hello, thank you. Thank you all for coming. I'm very sorry to have to take you away from uh, aiding the town or whatever, or, or recovery. He looks around at some, many of the people around you are injured as well. Who is it, Michael J. Fox? <laughs> what? <laughs> was that show where he was the vice mayor to the guy that was, dem- uh, that was, um, no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> What's his name? The guy that was uh <laughs> It's the old sitcom. Yeah. But this what was the who was possibly. he? He was uh damn it, Janet, I love you. Who's that guy? Oh, it Girl is Barry there. Bostwick? It is, yeah. He was vice mayor to Barry Bostwick in <laughs> in whatever <laughs> that show was. I have no idea, but like I'm surprised I guessed that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look up that later. But, uh, <laughs> In my head, it's it's Michael J. Fox. All right. Anyway, well, <laughs> so old mayor Teen Wolf. Um, <laughs> um, all right. He's so, the werewolf. Get him. Kill him. <laughs> the vice mayor, whose name is Cal Grintus, um, tells you that. It's a wolf name if I've Calvin, heard one. Calvin Klein. That's what his name is. Calvin Klein. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the vice mayor apologizes for uh, having to take everyone any, uh, away from their recovery or their duties or any charity work they happen to be doing around town and um, basically stands in front of a makeshift podium. Or not the makeshift podium. This is the town hall. The podium of the town hall. And... and um, <laughs> asked that if anyone saw anything like he was looking to see what like if anything if anyone knew what had happened last night they are they know that undead creatures don't just rampage through towns out of nowhere if anyone happened to and then he notices you Ray, and he's like encounter something odd last night uh excuse me miss miss what happened to your fucking face? <laughs> yeah, I speak up. I was like, I don't know. Uh, there were these. There was. There was this one stranger who, who was staring and muttering. Makes me think that she might have been some sort of witch. Yeah, so I can see how I that didn't would. Know be. you come from anime orc stock. He like <laughs> he, he he strains from me. He's like mm, Drennan, Miss Drennan. Is that you? Yes, it's me. Oh, dear. Don't mind my face. Look away. <laughs> Look away. I'm hideous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, Can anyone counter this hex? Uh, he looks around the room, and uh, uh, you see the, the locals, like, muttering to each other, talking about, well, you know, see one of them pointing at each other, like, I can't do that. I have no, I have the sufficient power for that. He says, I'm afraid you might have to take this. I'm afraid you might have to take it up the road to to the city. Actually, I mean, like, realistically not- speaking, I think that hex only lasts like rounds. But <laughs> but this is fun. They're going to run you out of town with with torches and pitchforks like, no, no, no. This is just to help speed things along. No hard feelings. <laughs> no, no, they're going to they're going to run you out of town with smiles and well wishes. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, pig face. <laughs> it's just like the church I used to attend. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna assume that it was an asp- an, an, an incredibly uh, auspicious auspicious moon for the forces of evil. No, she uh, critted that hex. Can I do a knowledge religion on the undead hand? Sure, if you like. I would like to know if I know anything about the creation of, or you know if that's a thing that just kind of wanders freely or if there's any like um, 
you know, whether it was controlled or not, or if it's just something that happens. Ooh, that is a natural 16 for a 20 knowledge religion. Ooh, I got an asterisk. You know the base CR for that creature? I can't remember. Let's CR five. Sorry. Ooh, that is- uh, They are CR five. Let's, let's call that a 25, actually. There you go. Again, a plus three from a monster lore and a plus two from a trait. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me find out what's going on here on these guys. It's been a while since I read about them. I can tell you. Sure. It's a, it's a giant crawling hand. <laughs> Which <Thanks. laughs> uh, but but there's a, the 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 Mark Quarry thing is it might be an interesting hook for it because they're a. Uh, they're like county right. dogs, you know. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. I'm looking at it now. Okay. Um, you, um, Fidelis, there you go. Uh, Fidelis, you, um, after doing a little bit of thinking about the way the hand is described, you realize. I, I encountered it as well. Oh, you encountered it? Okay. Uh, about what you saw, you know that this uh, creature was, is, is a kind of undead that one creates specifically to hunt down. Um, an individual at the behest of their master. Mm. Uh, it is a, a disgusting creature with a, a pussy bursts and. Uh, yes, I remember those. And pussy. Pussy bursts. <laughs> <laughs> and many of and many other uh, awful kind of uh, offensive abilities. Mm. <laughs> that uh, that Mark Quarry is um, what I'll speak on about. Mm. Uh, whoever Ooh. created this abomination specifically set it on this town. It has um, it is a hunting dog. It is not a a free roaming undead like many of the skeletons or zombies that you might encounter. This was a planned attack. Oh. I don't know who or why. But they set that beast upon us. Mm, they must have been. They must have been after <laughs> someone. Did how, uh, you think they could have been an assassin for the mayor? Mm, the mayor did suffer from its its predation. However, the the hand continued to rampage once uh, the mayor was put down. Yes. Yes. But uh, coupling this with. I am sorry, uh, Mistress Rain, for your affliction, but coupling that with her face and how busted it is now. <laughs> You're gonna call me busted, at least get my name right, it's Ryan. Ryan, oh yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I was reading it from your your Zoom window. But uh, oh. coupling with the, the, the damage done to her face, uh, I can only assume that this had something to do with everyone here this was an attack just i don't believe it was it could have just been indiscriminate or by chance <laughs> yes that does seem what kind of monster does that sort of thing and, sounds and, to me like evil for evil's sake <clears throat> yes and, and, I, and you said there were werewolves in the woods as well we heard the howling of werewolves yes as he um as you say that the door slams open and you see two men uh, carrying a litter into the uh, into the the town hall. On, you throw on that the, in the bin, sir. <laughs> uh, on the litter is a man that is um, like pretty injured, like just extremely, like kind of fucked up. <laughs> the um, the the people bring him down and put him on. Like, do they sweep a bunch of stuff off one of the, the tables and put him down on top of it? The uh, the guard carrying the top front of the litter says, "This man insists on seeing uh, the vice, seeing the mayor." The vice mayor says, "Well, I'll have to do." He walks over uh, down off his podium towards the man, and the man who is is barely uh, breathing or alive. He's just sort of you see him gasping in agonal breaths. He um he, he leans forward to the mayor to the vice mayor and whispers something in his ear, and then he expires. The uh, the vice mayor uh, looks utterly shaken by it. And says, "I see, I see." Is there no way to save them? If you'd like to try, 
yes, first I will um, cast Stabilize, and then with a flick of my wrist, pull out my Wand of Cure Light Wounds. All right. And use, I will wand him, good. Good and slow. Yes. <laughs> you attempt to use it. You attempt to use your wand, and you find that um, the, the wand does not go off. This this man is well beyond the mortal coil. He was only hanging on by by shreds. The um, the vice mayor doffs his cap and says, "I'm going to need a few volunteers. I need, we need the town needs a little bit more. We need some more help." He um, he, you see, he's got something clenched in his fist that the the dying man gave him. Can I get some volunteers? Any way to see what it is he's holding? Uh, no. Is it- Ryan's hand goes up immediately. <laughs> All right. And I, I and, I volunt- I, and I actually step forward and go, well, as soon as I can take care of Dink <clears throat> and look through the tavern, I'll be uh, glad to um, do justice. Yes, it doesn't have to be immediate, but it does need to be within the before morning. I woke up in the tavern. Do I know what happened to Dink? You woke up next to Dink's corpse. Hmm. Woke up like this. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I have seen Dink. He did not make it. Once oh, I know. I'm just here. I'm going to bury him and give him the proper rights before we leave. Yes, once we have um, laid the departed to rest, I will volunteer as well to raid this town and whatever needs doing. The rest of you, he says, after he gets after he gets enough volunteers to his satisfaction. The rest of you, I have a number of jobs that need to be done. If you can, the don't require travel. So if you could please stay for the meeting. The rest of you, you four, uh, please accompany, or please go about whatever you need to be done and be back here by nightfall. Gathering my holy symbols and weapons mm-hmm. and armor, and I'm ready. Um, Fidelis is going to draft a letter to the hierarchy of the Shalin Church requesting a, another priest, cleric, paladin, inquisitor, someone within the hierarchy to come uh, take his place as caretaker of the temple. All right. I'll do, um, I'll lead Wraith to the to, to Dink's body and okay. help him with that. Dink was like one of the first people I think Ulf would have spoken to because he was kind of living in the woods with the music and oh yeah and board I mean, is what led him into the tavern to begin with so he's probably one of the first because yeah, we went out often to gra- gather herbs and stuff from out there yeah probably mm. sold you a good bit of that stuff probably <laughs> sold me a good bit of herb yeah no he's uh <laughs> he's definitely an old woody hippie halfling. <laughs> you ever seen God, man? <laughs> Eat these mushrooms and you will. Yeah, we <laughs> actually ran, ran like a little side business about alchemy and herbalism out of the shop during the normal hours. <laughs> herbalism and artisanal hand-blown glass. <laughs> I mean. We also sell turtles, man. And, you know. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Why do you Purple think it's called Haze? the Fairy's Fire Tavern? It's the weirdest store I ever went into. It was Purple Haze. They had <laughs> it was a head shop with like pipes. They had secondhand music equipment. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Use CDs and a turtle tank. And it was and like, what? What are you? What are you doing? <laughs> Whatever we want, man. Yeah, just <laughs> we live here and we sell our stuff. Oh, okay. I mean, nothing more soothing than, you know, looking at your turtle while getting high, I guess. It's such a weird smell in that, that store. Oh. <laughs> I literally, my first podcast pitch was a friend of mine who had lots of lots of herb and, and a fish tank where we sat in front of it. <laughs> I was like, we should just have a podcast where it's just like it's just the tank. <laughs> and what's happening inside the tank? And we're just having our conversation. <laughs> Call it the musings of turtles. I, I, the voice Adult of the swim. Turtle. Adult Swim did that. They had um, like a whole season of a fish tank, and it was two announcers describing <laughs> what was going on with the fish in the fish tank. I don't know. I never saw that, but I knew I, I could be. I could run programming for 
for them. <laughs> Got the mindset so, uh, for it. Terrence, we'll, yeah. um, we'll take time and we'll take we'll take Dink's body out, find a, pro- a location where I can actually bury him properly. All right. And say a few words. And then once that's done, I will go back into the tavern and quote unquote salvage everything I possibly can um, from out of there and then buy, um, pay off any um, bills he had left over with um, right. what I can and basically finish this as now I have a feeling I'm going to be out and about going after seeking justice. So I won't have much time to be back in town. Gotcha. I would um, like to um, go through and whatever religion the the people, the, the dead have, I would like to perform rites accordingly to their religion, their okay. their preferred um, burial rites or whatever. That's probably going to take a lot of the day. Okay. This is my cousin, uh, Mickey. He, he, he worshiped the demon lord, Agar, Agar Blaster. <laughs> Hang on, and I'll flip through my book of religion. Hmm, apparently, they prefer their bodies to be eaten in a feast. <laughs> I don't think we'll do that today. You just have to do the sermon real close, get in here close, and give a sermon to me. <laughs> just face to face with the, with the, the odors of the odors of our musk mingled. We know the spirit has passed on. May the demon lord accept you into his gullet. <laughs> Hail Agablasted. Hail Agablasted. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but yes, you uh, you guys go doing uh, go about your solemn work of um, burying the dead and helping others do the same. You gather your gear, and by evening, all your work is done, or at least all the work that you can conceivably fit into this day. Uh, you arrive, um, you find, you, uh, excuse me, little, uh, Wraith, uh, you find a 75 year old, um, bottle of wine that, uh, your, your friend was saving for an special occasion. Like he said, he wanted to, he wanted to keep it until they started, he started his second location, which he never actually ever got around to doing. And you were wondering if he was just waiting for it to age out of being good. So he never had to drink it, but there it is. As uh, the part one of the part of the ceremony, I will actually break that out and call for others to come over and we will sample and celebrate, and I'll pour some on his grave. All right. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's a shame you weren't able to do it for, for, for its intended purpose. But it puts you, it puts your, it puts your mind at ease. It, it lets you know that um, this person who enriched the lives of everyone around him has, has, uh, has left behind at least the taste of, of his, his philosophy. And um, when you guys get back down to the the town hall, you see the vice mayor now looking incredibly tired as he had not slept, much like you guys, not slept um, at all since yesterday morning. I'll actually offer him a drink to oh, uh, just a little shot. I don't know. In memory of all those. Ah, well, then I can't turn that kind of libation down. He's, he, he quickly knocks it back and says, hmm, that's good stuff. Well, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I need someone to head to the city. Uh, we need some sort of reinforcement. The, the guards, the, um, the, the royal guard need to know about this attack. I thought it might've, it might've been something indiscriminate, but obviously this is not, there's some something, there's something quite dangerous afoot going on here. I have been thinking about this most of the day in the back of my mind, it almost feels as if it is an attack on the trade routes coming and going from the city, as if someone was trying to undermine the kingdom as a whole. That's what I was thinking myself, honestly. It's very astute. Trader's Fork is a valuable location. Uh, all Most of our farmlands filter their, 
preserves and dried goods through here before, before they head um, west. And uh, most everything else that needs to head north and, and east uh, eventually comes through our town as well. This is, Traders Fork is a vital part of the economy here. But if you take this to Emerald Hill, I need, I need them to, I guess, send reinforcements, more guards, something. Um, more, you'll have to forgive me. A more official investigation than I can muster here. I don't like to de- I don't like to denigrate the quality of the abilities of the people in the town, but I need something to reach the palace, and none of us have that capability. Sure, I, anyone can go to Emerald Hill and find out that they. How shall I put this? don't really matter all that much but this is too big too hard to ignore i've been hearing all sorts of rumors from the forests and other traders i heard about a caravan of um, halflings that was slaughtered on one of the side roads i've heard that there are dark dealings in the woods to the north there everyone here in my position and the former mayor's has been hearing rumors something is wrong in Greenvale. And we need to send that rumor, no, this evidence to the royal city. And so that's what I'm tasking you to do. Also, if you can bring back uh, Miss Ryan, someone to help you, yourself, and the, um, the other young ladies afflicted with a similar um, a similar pig face. It's called pig face. I don't, I was not, uh, no, no uh, a similar <laughs> issue. <laughs> Affliction. Affliction would be the term. Affliction. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we go to my order house in the city, I'm sure that there are clerics of Shailen that would be more than capable of handling such an affliction and we can fix her busted face. So can I ask, what are we going to do? What do you plan on doing with that undead abomination that you have? Oh, it's already been burned. I'm afraid. So it's, it's, it is destroyed. We know for a fact that it is destroyed. Ah, uh, yes. We threw it on the bonfire where we were basically just trying to burn off debris. And, um, so heavy because I seem to remember that in a different story. <laughs> it was in a pit trap outside a town. Yeah. Was it a different? could poke at it. It molted and they got the shavings. <laughs> it's in their backstory. These giant hands molt. <laughs> Just way more the giant hand. The giant hand had a baby. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the lesser hand. They ever froze. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him happy that long. <laughs> unreliable narrator theory. I'm going the unreliable narrator happy. theory where uh, Valric was a massive liar. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully, his skill set checks out. What was your bonus to bluff? It's not like I was telling a story. It was a flashback <laughs> where I wanted Handy to live, and you just took it. You took it from me. He'll make no. a new one. <laughs> well, yeah, my bluff is like 30. In, yeah, in fuck, memory massive of liar. <laughs> it's like you're even lying to yourself. Well, yeah, it might you. be. He took your hand away just like he took all of Cybot's gear in one <laughs> fell swoop. You don't want me to have anything. I want to take everything from you, Tucker. Everything. <laughs> well, take my post coital migraine syndrome, you fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I have pre migraine syndrome. So. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> what a headache. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, anyway, so yes, you are, um, you are tasked by the vice mayor to, now mayor, I suppose, <laughs> to head to the city of Emerald Hill in order to basically alert the authorities of what has happened. 
He says, you needn't come back with them, but make sure they get sent. It's important. And if you don't find a cure for her face, you needn't come back at all. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Here's a hood. I don't well, think I will. Oh, my. <laughs> you are definitely going to be turning heads. All right. Um, my I've thinking a- is, after we send the authorities back to Traders Fork, perhaps we can do a little investigation of our own to see if we can uncover why, who, what? Is this an inquisitor who inquisits? My God. When? I mean, Where? It, is, How? it is my skills. Are you going to use that I'm going to be able to handle this. Uh, <laughs> if, oh, my if, God. I believe that if no one else will come with me, I must take this upon myself. <laughs> well, that'll be a fun adventure. <laughs> <laughs> It's Frank's show. It's Frank's show. <laughs> All right, everybody, tune in to watch me on my side quest as I ask questions. I mean, isn't that basically what D and D is? Asking questions and getting answers. Mm-hmm. But does oh, no. twenty-two hit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does this creature does have it? CR? SR? All right, so. Uh, the vice mayor tells you that a, if you don't have um, the ability to travel, he says he has a cart, a horse, and, a horse and cart prepared to take you along your journey. They, um, they've gotten one donated to you for this mission. Actually, he probably got the cart that I used to bring gear into town because I had to sell it to, to pay off bills. Okay. So he probably like took that cart. It was like, hey, hey, here's you a cart, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> How magnanimous. Like, He's a ring. Oh, that looks familiar. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, you find uh, a, 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 dra- a couple of draft horses in a cart. Um, they This one is covered, a covered wagon. It says, um, in case you have to make a stop, though, you'll probably have to. It's still a, it's still a two day journey, but to the town by cart. But, we feel that perhaps um, this will encourage you to maybe push on a little further if you can. Um, the vice mayor hands you the reins. He gives you a stipend of a hundred gold pieces for your travel uh, out of the town coffers. And as a uh, group, right? Yeah, as a group. Okay. So this is this. This should cover your food and lodgings once you get to Emerald Hill. And uh, do hurry if you can. And he dismisses you. You heard the man. Let's hurry. <laughs> so yes. are we gonna leave tonight, or are we gonna rest tonight? I'm tired, and I wish to rest before we head out early in the morning. morning. Mm, yes, we have basically worked through the night and into the next night. All right. He says that's acceptable if you wish. Uh, if you don't, if you don't have a if you don't have a um, place to stay, uh, they have a they have a shelter set up. I'll spend the night with the horses. Okay. Get now, myself familiar find, with the creatures since I'll right, be you find, forcing them across you, town. Now, once you find the stable where the horses are set up, uh, you, you see the cart and everything, and it's just it's easy to just hang out in the stable all night. Like no, no one's really watching shit much in, in the stables you see that the town guard is still basically dedicatedly patrolling the streets trying to look like they're doing something <laughs> I guess I'll go home then all right um your parents are shocked all right do you still live with your folks I do yes. all right, your parent your parents are shocked by what has gone what has happened to you your mother oh. t- your mother tearfully cries over you, like, my beautiful girl, what has gone wrong? What has happened to you? Where- I'm still the same me, mother. <laughs> She's it's like, still me. <laughs> she, um, she takes you into her arms and says, don't worry, they'll fix you up in the city. The, 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 the Duke and his men will do whatever they have to. She is a, a sh- sure of it. 
Indeed. The let's see, since you're staying in the stable, um both, I need you to give me a perception check in the night. In perception. Tears. Um while he's doing that, before we get there, um when it was around supper time that night. I wanted to like call out to everybody and say, hey, if y'all have any food, um, any goods that are going to spoil, bring them here. And I I will actually start cooking to give out to the residents that have been working all day. All right. You do some. When I do that, (laughs) I actually use a spell that will actually work and help cook for me. Okay. So it, it animates the tools and stuff. So I'm there like directing it while it's like picture the Mickey Mouse apprentice, except it doesn't go haywire quite as bad. All right. I was thinking Ron Weasley's mom's kitchen. <laughs> All right. Well, what did you get? A 31. Right. Damn. I rolled a 19. Shit. All right. Sheesh. And what would you, what you would normally expect to be an extremely deep sleep kind of night your eyes snap awake or snap open in the uh, in the darkness of the um, stables you see a man trying to move silently through the stable like uh, the thing that woke you up was the nervousness of the horses more than the man moving they all suddenly awaken as well and seem extremely out of sorts The man slumps against a storage shed within the stable and slides down into a pile of old hay. (laughs) You see he is wounded and um, covered in soot himself. You see that there is um, something wrong with the fellow. As as he, he basically is basically just collapsing down in there. Um, but he doesn't know he doesn't notice you but you well, see that his presence has really unnerved the horses horses that are so used to people that they barely acknowledge they exist uh I'll get up and go to him unstealthily okay you know, I'm an old man oh All right. sir are you okay <laughs> his eyes um blearily pop up and he's like he begins looking around wildly. You, how did you? Ah, uh, you see, he's holding like um, his side as if he's taken a, a pretty bad injury there. And I'm you see the reaching into a pouch to grab some berries. There are a number of like sticks sticking out of him. But like they look like um, bolts, crossbow bolts or something that might have oh. like that might have like just he's just snapped off instead of pulling out. Yeah, I'll crouch yeah. down. Hey, yeah, yeah, eat these. They'll help. All right. He, um, he, he, he greedily eats the berries that you give him. <clears throat> I assume these are good berries? or They are, and three of them will heal him for three hit points. All right. And you see that um, some of his wounds stop oozing, and he's like, Thank you, old halfling. Mm. Hand on the shoulder. We could probably go get you some better help. No. No. Give us a wad of cure light wounds, but I, I, I won't use it in storytelling. Okay. He's like, my wounds should heal on their own. It's just, I've been very exhausted. You see him uh, finally start digging at the, the arrow, uh, arrows that are in his shoulder, and he begins plucking out the arrowheads. And tossing them into the the uh, the grass, he's like, "Have you seen?" He um, begins di- also digging at his like tattered shirt, and he pulls out a um, a pendant. He says, "Have you seen any other men with this pendant today?" Take a look at it and answer honestly. Uh, it is a. It looks like a golden talon uh, on a medallion. Uh, you have not seen any men like that with this pendant today. However, you do recall seeing a few last night at the bar. Oh, there were a few last night at the bar. I've not seen them since. Damn. Damn. 
I was hoping I had been. It doesn't matter. He, uh, he looks around and, and uh, you see, as soon as he looks up, his eyes kind of like catch the lights like an animal's would, mm. which is not something you normally see in humans. And the horses like begin backing up in their stables. You're like, this right. isn't really where I should be staying, but I can't risk exposure. Well, is there anyone in town I could go find for you to bring here to help? No. No. But uh, he he looks up and says, there was a woman with golden hair. Did you happen to see her? I'll answer honestly again. Um, make an intelligence check, I guess, to see if you, see if you remember anything. I well, remember when she was in town, she didn't have golden hair. Hmm. Then no, you don't remember a woman with golden hair. Oh, I got a, a tw- dirty 20 on that intelligence, so yeah. All right. <laughs> remember, they had wanted posters of mm-hmm. the lady and Zarius. There was, he's like, there was a goblin, but he didn't look like one. Did you see that? No. So no. He, 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 he sh- he's like, damn, I forget. I see things about this guy. He, uh, he leans in and says, I don't know what you're doing or this town, but you need to be beha- beware of the golden-haired woman. She travels with a goblin and two other men. One is some sort of warrior with magical abilities. The other, uh, he, 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 his stomach clenches on him. like he, 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 he curls up a little bit and says, there's another. He controlled... He controlled undead creatures. He, he resurrected. He resurrected my brothers and turned them into monsters. I can feel their souls crying out. They are trapped in a hell of yeah, disgusting immortality. And you see his face like kind of elongate, like his, his, his nose and his mouth just sort of move forward in a, in a very unnerving way. Okay. Uh, that's a 15 on a handle animal check. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll, I'll let it go. He's like, you're able, to, you're able to soothe the guy a little bit. Slip a little sliver of beef jerky. Yeah. Just nibble this out of the palm of my hand, sir. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Do a little clicker. <laughs> click, 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 click. Spray bottle. Stop. He, um, but like his face, his face quickly returns to normal. And he says, I need sleep. I need rest. Thank you, friend. Do not tell the authorities. They won't understand. And then he sort of just falls asleep on, on the hay in the corner of the room. Hmm. What do you do? I tuck him in a little, some more hay. Um, and then I sit and I contemplate it for probably far too long. What time of night is it? Pretty late. Like, it's, it's, it's well towards morning by the time this happened. Well, might as well stay up. I'll um, I'll get the the horses settled in the the cart. Okay. Um, and then do a last check in to see if that guy still passed out. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, I will go to. When you check him, you find most of his wounds have healed up. Those must have been some good berries. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming. Oh wait! I, knowledge of nature. I could probably tell that he's a werewolf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it falls under. Uh, I'm rolling rocks for these skill checks, which means I'm going to do terrible in that first combat. Uh, Twenty-eight. <laughs> uh, yes, the man is clearly a werewolf, but like he is not an afflicted werewolf. It's, it's, uh, he is one of the natural born werewolves that have um, a level of control that afflicted do not. Well, to me, it's obvious that he has information. 
And I feel like the most cool headed of the group that I've met so far would be Fidelis. Um, so I will go find him first and try to bring him here. All right. Okay. Now, the night before Fidelis had opened the Temple of Shaylin to anyone who needed shelter or sucker or aid. Um, sucker. <laughs> so if, if there was anyone that you know, needed a place to crash, the temple was open. So right. you may have to, you know, step over some people crashing in the pews. It's fun. But when you, uh, when you get to Fidelis, he is wrapping up his morning prayers. Uh, he's looking at uh, beautiful artwork, I guess. I'm not sure how Shaylin worshipers do that. But. They're uh, the same God. It's uh, yeah, well, it's music and art and anything like that. I think even though I worship Shaylin, I'm actually more worshiping one of her Agathonian children. Mm, one of her spirit animals? Yeah, uh, but don't call them spirit animals. They don't like that. Mm, Agathonians, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's so, actually in their thing. They hate being called just like animal, even though they're basically like they're like mer folk, but like of all the different animal species. But they hate. They being don't want to be called furries. Is what yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, when you when you come across Fidelis, he is um, outside the temple, taking in the beauty of nature and playing a violin beautifully. All right. Um, you are interrupted by the halfling, or rather, you the halfling waits till you're done with your, your morning worship. And, um, I appreciate the music, okay. And, uh, are you guys heading back to the temp, the the liver stables? His call, uh, yes, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll fill him in, give him the, the whole deets. Hmm, and you believe that. This man was one of the werewolves that may have been heard in the in the night. His wounds were definitely not one caused by a giant hand. There were bolts in his stomach. They healed quickly. I would have gotten the others, but she seems angry still, and Wraith had just lost someone. I didn't know if they would be um, the best to question a possible suspect. Plus, your class gives you all the proper benefits to <laughs> oh, the proper to, skill to, checks need to inquisiting mm, yes yes perhaps I will inquisit a little um, let me see if I've got a judgment for that we're all not judging really. now okay so do you go or not yeah oh yeah absolutely we all right, head there over there <laughs> all right you guys head over there um when you get back to the the stable uh you see that um that Ulf has prepared the horses for the next day's journey, but uh, you have trouble locating the fellow. Make a perception check or to try and find the guy. Okay. Um, perception or survival? Perception. Okay. Ooh, that's a seven on the die for a 16. Uh, you cannot find him. Hey, you you find the kind of bloody pile of hay where he arrested through the night. How about you, Ulf? I rolled a 19 again, so 31. All right, you find him higher up in the lofts, um, amongst the the the, ba the baled hay. He's created his own little area to recover in. Nest, if you will. Yeah, he looks up at you and like thinks for a moment. And says, "I thought I dreamed you." Afraid not. Are you going to turn me in? No, no. This is a. Uh... New, new acquaintance. Uh, it's just probably better to talk to him. Uh, he's young. We are looking for, we might be looking for the people you're looking for. Yes. Hello. I am Fidelis Delamere. I am not uh, in any capacity with the government. I am a simple inquisitor of Shay Lin. And you may, you sound as if you have information you might be able to use. Jarek Vansell. I'm with the Golden Pack. 
Hmm. Can I do you a have knowledge no local? Local? Yeah, go ahead and do local. Yeah. Knowledge local of 11. All together? Um, yeah, unless I'm trying to find weaknesses or abilities. It's just All a right. knowledge of um, 11. 20, 21. Not, not ringing a bell for you, uh, <laughs> Fidelis. However, uh, Ulf, you've heard, vaguely heard of the Golden Pack as a, as a band of werewolf bounty hunters? Okay. I'll, I'll just be like, ah, the bounty hunter group. Yes. Hmm. Uh, he. Do I know them to be like um, sway at any like? Do they mostly just take anything, or do they have like a code? Uh, you know that they don't infect. That is one of their 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 tenants. They don't infect. They don't. They don't. Um, Let's see, how do I put this? They don't really necessarily uh, discern about who they the targets are. They don't, except unless they are like, uh, unless they're like easy prey. They don't do easy prey. They don't do children. They don't do like the elderly. They don't do like sitting. Oh, then I'm safe. Yeah, they, 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 the, the golden pack are hunters first and foremost, and they value the hunt, but they also realize that they can get paid for it. So uh, <laughs> they, they, they take gold in order to do what's natural to them and hunt down difficult targets. I'll whisper towards Fidelis, fairly respectable group. We have traditions and they're non-spreaders of viruses. Yes. <clears throat> so your purpose was to hunt down um, Ulf, Ulf told me a little bit about uh, what you had mentioned the people you were searching for you said one of them controlled undead do you have um, sketches or names of these your quarry <sighs> we, well, one of us had names I don't know them oh, I uh, I wasn't really a, a leader, a pack leader. I'm just sort of a, I'm just a hunter. Hmm. Our trackers are the ones that really took care of that. I know that one of them was named Zarius. Zarius. I believe. And, uh, I will pull out a little notepad and I will take notes as he is... Mm -hmm. Talking. One of them had golden hair, a woman. Would you say that she is unusually beautiful? <laughs> That's what I hear. Wow. I didn't get to see. I didn't get a very close look. All I saw was a wall of color, and then monsters came rolling out of it. Hmm. Wall of color. Ulf will sit down and begin rolling a joint. There was a halfling, but there was also the stench of death in the air. I don't know. Or not a halfling. A man that looked like a halfling, but was a goblin. But there was also the stench of death in the air. A goblin that looked like a halfling. It was confusing. Hmm. Okay. And I know there was an, another man, the one that controlled the, the monsters. Pale fellow. Lots of robes. Exactly the kind of person you'd think. Or at least that's the description we have. I never saw him. Just this wall of color, yes? Just, just a wall of color and pain. I'm surprised I made it out with my life, and I'm very certain the rest of my pack did not. Well, it says the bounty still stands on them, though. Well, if these are the ones who attacked Traitor's Fork, then we definitely are after the same people. And I'm sure that the authorities in Emerald Hill would be very interested to know of them. Do you know then, why they would have attacked here? 
I don't know. Foreigners, I know that. So they're not from Emerald Hill? No, they're not from the Vale. That's for sure. Uh, can anybody else think of any other questions that maybe Matt, uh, that Freaks can't think of, that Fidelis might? Why were they hunting them? Oh, yeah. Why Why were you after them? Uh, who, who assigned this bounty? Ah. Well, that's the thing. It was very mysterious. The, the, the person funding the bounty is also a foreign benefactor. I even hear they're from the same territory. All we know, we're supposed to bring the heads in to a place called the Duchy of Limro. Duchy of Limro assigned the bounty. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I am at a loss uh, for what else to ask. I know I'm. That was a really uh, big clue for our other characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been good to know. The, um, found that out. The 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 werewolf uh, Vancell uh, painfully stands up and says. I can't be here any longer. I need to get out of town. I have to get back to my superiors. Hmm. You want to deliver this information to Emerald Hill, you're more than welcome. I don't know if another team is going to be dispatched to take these people out, but I'm going to definitely lobby for it. He sticks out his hand to you, uh, Ulf, and says, thank you for the... Oh, for the weed. Thank you for the weed. for a second. And someone... Yeah, we lost you for a little bit. Thank you for the. That was it. Thank you for, thank you for the aid last night, and thank you for the um, the ear to listen. Yes. If you need some more berries for the road. Oh no. I feel well enough. Once a little bit, once I get a little bit of meat in me, I'll be fine. He begins. He moves past you and um, heads to the sh- to the ladders and begins to descend. The horses are begin to act up again as he goes by, and you let and you hear him let out a, a bestial little growl in his throat as he goes by. Thank you for taking the time to answer my questions. Thank you for not reporting me. He says as he steps out of the uh, <laughs> out of the delivery and disappears. And uh, off board, thank you for coming to get me. That was most, uh, most helpful. Shortly thereafter, Wraith and Ryan appear um, ready for the trip. You'll notice when Ryan appears that she now has a, uh, she now seems to have wooden elk horns nice attached to her head that's her her mother insisted that she take that as her holy symbol okay and uh a pouch of seeds that you'll notice that everywhere everywhere they stop she'll she'll plant four or five seeds and have a little a little moment to commune with nature cool. how about you um wraith are you ready for the journey uh, yeah, you see Wraith, he comes up and he's got a long leather trench coat, or it looks like leather. It's actually um, leather. leaves. <laughs> but um, he has a pistol that has six barrels, and he has a long... Well, like a pan flute? Musket. Oh, that that pepper that looks, the musket that's on his back looks like it's well-worn and... Not in the best of conditions, but the uh, the six barrel pistol looks like it's in immaculate condition. Word. And all of right. course, he has like a huge backpack with all kinds of stuff. He's got a bunch of crap hanging off of him, all over the place. So does Ryan. <laughs> all right, you, you carry odd implements, my friend, Rafe. What um. What is that on your hip? 
this gun. Hmm. I've heard of these guns. Spelled G O N E. <laughs> it's a goon. It, <laughs> it makes your enemies goon. <laughs> now, <clears throat> before we leave, I am afraid, Offboard, I know that you had uh, requested my assistance this morning in confidence, but I believe that our vice mayor, Michael J. Fox, definitely <laughs> needs to know about. Calvin Klein. Sorry, Calvin Klein. Uh, our vice mayor, Calvin Klein, needs to know the information that was given to us by that man. Of course. You could do with as you please now. Information? Question mark? I will relay it um, after we are on the road, but first I must tell the authorities. All right. After you tell the vice mayor... Uh, Basically, be on the lookout for these people. If they come back through, they are possibly responsible as he, says, I'll have, he takes he takes he takes de- intricate notes and says I'll have a wanted post to draft it up and maybe uh, some crier sent around to the nearest towns um it would behoove you to perhaps draft a letter to the duchy of limro limro no i wouldn't i doubt yeah. we're going to get much action out of them as i understand that limro was recently conquered by some sort of mercenary king well the that was who initially posted the bounty for hmm. the Golden Company, Golden Tavern. It may well, be there a rebel unit within, so... I will definitely take that into consideration, but I'm not sure I want to draw more unwanted attention from yes. outsiders. Intrafief politics is beyond me. Huh. I look at me, I'm an assistant mayor. <laughs> but you do have mayor in your title somewhere, so you know so you know a bit more than I do. But anyway, here's the information. Yes. Um, I hope that you that it proves useful to you. Now we are going to hit the road so that I can tell my party about everything that I've learned. Meanwhile, later on, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the road, um, I, I assume Ulf and Fidelis recounts their encounters to uh, Ryan and Wraith. I'll yes. let him do most of the talking. I think I'm out front, actually. I'm I'm leading the horses. Okay. And the, what do you call it? Uh, Driving? Yeah. <laughs> Is it just a driver? Yeah, just yeah. let me ask where the word comes from. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Uh, it comes from droving, which is, you know... I'm droving them. I'm drove, droving. No, I'm actually riding my horse. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I assume you're, you're riding nearby, but... Oh, yes. So, what we believe to be the culprits of the attack, not only on Traitor's Fork itself, but also on your personage. Madam Rhine? Miss Rhine? Which do you prefer? Sir Rhine? Hey, what? S-Y-R? Just, just Rhine. It's fine. I I am a believer of honorifics. I apologize if my formal tone is too f- formal. For this for this setting, let's say that the um, someone with a knighthood that actually participates in combat that is also female gets seer. <laughs> I mean, does it does does the paladin miss require being a knight? Is that the same thing? No, no. I just I'm just laying the groundwork for that. Okay. <laughs> that is that is Fidelis uh, making assumptions based on mm. your your bearing in your clothing. You are a holy warrior, basically a knight in his mind. But um, yes. Yeah, so Ryan, oh, yeah. the, the attack on your person as well. Uh, believes uh, we believe comes from um, a woman who normally has golden hair but apparently did not have golden hair last ne- night I would have recognized golden hair yes I don't remember I don't recall seeing anyone like that either you do re- recognize the, the description of being an exceptional beauty mm, yes Indeed. Like, so this is a out of character, 
I know you said that there were wanted posters around for them. Like if we pass one, then I think Ryan would definitely be like, that's her, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I will mention something after hearing everything I've heard, I go, well, I think we have, there might be a couple things going on here. First of all, we assumed that they were intentionally here to destroy Trader's um, Fork. Now, while they did massive damage to the town, and I'm pissed because my friend's now dead, if their goal was to disrupt travel going forward and trade, then they could have done way more to that town than what they did. Quite honestly, I just get the impression of a bunch of pissed off punks that just don't give a damn and just just doing evil. That well, they you just walk by this place. You never underestimate the power of destroyed morale. Traders Fork was a a haven on the road. It was a safe refuge that never was bothered by monsters or bandits. And now it has been decimated. Yes, but it hasn't stopped its function. It can still proceed to do that. I mean, yes, morale's down, Mm. (laughs) but they did not stop its function. They did not destroy the town completely. No, but they did cast aspersions on its safety. There will be rumors spread about how dangerous Trader's Fork has become recently. Well, there's rumors around the whole territory is dangerous now. Yes, maybe that is their purpose. Sow seeds of discord and undermine the the safety of Emerald Hill and the Vale at large. I don't know. I just I just get the feeling that we're giving them too much tactical credit, maybe. It's, it's like they're a bunch of, of blundering assholes that just do a bunch just of destructive blundering, shit. Yes, yes. Blundering like teenage assholes, but extremely <laughs> evil teenage assholes going around and disrupting just for the fun of it. You know. In my experience, it is better to overestimate an enemy than to underestimate one. The way I but, see it, evil in any of its forms needs to be vanquished. No matter what their, no matter what their aim was, I take it as my personal duty to make sure that they no longer have the ability to do this. We shall take them out and let their gods deal with them after that. I, I, not, not I as she's talking, I turn my head away so she cannot see me with a smirk on my face. I just looked and saw a pig. Speaking in that royal tone <laughs> and so serious of a, but I just I just turn my head away so I can't so she does not see me smirk and All almost right. want to laugh. It's too serious of a situation for that to come out. Speaking of laughter, this has nothing to do with laughter. As you guys travel along, it's gotten uh, pretty late in the day. And um, you know that it's probably going to get nightfall is going to be soon, but you come to a place where there is um, obvious signs of a combat. There is you 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 see all on the road itself splashes of blood. You see um, like broken branches. You see the the things torn up. It l- looks like places where spells have ripped through the ground. But you don't see any bodies. <laughs> mm. Get down and uh, do a survival check to look at the tracks and try to see if I can figure out what's happened. All right. Um, you make the check for me. I'll, I'll help. Sure. I'll also assist. I hope you roll good because I definitely I help like a mother. Oh my god! I rolled a nineteen. Yeah, perfect. Plus two, twenty-one. I plus barely assist. Five. So twenty-six plus whatever everybody else gives me. Oh, okay, that's not so thirty. 
you are able to track the course of a combat. You pick up the trail of one person and um, begin mo- moving along the roads. It's, it appears to be someone on foot that is engaging with something big. And uh, you find an enormous set of footprints. Um, the, the, this person is, is basically run down by and smashed utterly. Parents, real quick, just so we're not caught off guard, I will be, I'll look around. Once I kind of figure out what the tracks are, I do a quick look around to make sure and listen to perception check to see if there's any current danger that we are uh, to make on um, to be aware of. All right. Okay. Hold on. Hold that thought. Um, you track them to where obviously the kill took place. There is just a massive pile of blood. And you see that where the big the big uh, assailant, who obviously won, wandered off in a different direction. However, you see that there are faint traces of the blood being disturbed and sticky brown blood footprints have wandered off in a different direction. And as you look over t- to um, to the to the w- to the west, you can see in the fading light of the day a number of men standing in the woods just standing there um so, some of them wobble back and forth gently as if swaying in the breeze they all have uh, various degrees of injury from what you can see but they haven't noticed you they are men who are clearly dead Ooh. Can I detect evil? Oh, uh, sure. 60 foot range, if they're within that range. Uh, you definitely get an aura, uh, a, a minor aura of evil off these creatures. They are very weak, undead zombies. But there seem to be quite a few of them. They look to be dressed in the manner of, say, your average road bandit. I will relay that information. These seem to be undead bandits. Can I do a knowledge religion on zombies? Sure. That is a 14. Oh, wait. Nope. That's 19. Sorry. All right. About my monster lore. (laughs) Okay. Uh, they look to be nothing more than standard zombies. They have naturally resist. They are resistant to weapon damage except for slashing. But they are. They move in such a way as to give you the impression that they are not the the quick or more dangerous variety of zombies. They just seem to be things that have been spontaneously animated and wandered around. We cannot let these creatures. Persist. Took the words out of my mouth. All right. She says as she quick draws her long sword. All right. And uh, as you guys move towards where the zombies are are standing around together, as if they know each other, as if they're about to engage in conversation, as their slack jaws uh, look like they're about to tighten up and and give a joke. Um. One of their dangling eyes sort of turns at at. A, and wobbles out of its socket as their heads turn towards you as you're heading towards them. And we'll pick it up there next time. Mm. All right. Mm. Sorry, you only got like 30 minutes before you gotta leave. Man. I don't gotta have a stupid fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb we job. Start off with a zombie fight. Uh, you know, I mean, you. I figured you guys would want to do something to do with the previous group, and here's those bandits you killed. <laughs> and, and, well, just FYI, we should be a day, completely a day behind them. You are a day behind them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> well, like, like a full 24 hours behind them. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but our goal is not directly them we need to get to emerald hill well we don't even know they're they're here right that they've been here we're we we're, we don't know which way they went okay we put two and two together 
Yeah, uh, we're dumb. Yeah, somebody just remind me I chose my longsword over my lucerne this time because All right. uh, stuff. I will. I found mm-hmm. a lantern staff and I can't wait to use it. That way, when I hit somebody, I do 1d4 minus 1 plus 1d6 fire. <laughs> that was good. Oh, you're like that little, um... oh, nobody would get that reference. Never mind. <laughs> I'll throw it out there anyway. The Internet's large and vast, and there's like uh, eight people. The In the anime, The Ancient Magus Bride, oh, there never is mind. the Will of the Wisp. Oh, yeah. The Will of the Wisp rides a lantern staff, <laughs> sets undead creatures on fire. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not going to be the guy that runs up to hit something with a staff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, guy. But yeah, so uh, this is exciting. Let me just quit my job. Let's just let's roll initiative. All right. <sighs> anyway, thanks for listening, everyone, to our first episode of the Campaign B: Unnecessary Evil. <laughs> of Ra- Raiders of the Lark. Uh, as always, don't forget to hit our links and our bullshit and our doodads. Um, Toker, what are those? <laughs> Homebrewdetritus.com oh, right, right, right. You can also w- support us w- on Patreon w- to get w- this show way, <laughs> way faster. I think. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> several episodes earlier. Um... Though, actually, if you released these now, they would almost be... Con- <laughs> it would almost be... His internet sucks today. I or like he's the, hitting uh, pause to, like, drink. So we can't <laughs> see him drink. <laughs> I like so the idea of us releasing these. Oh, what happened now? Uh, you froze again. After you were about to say concurrent. Concurrent. Yeah. What? Oh. Never mind. Fuck it. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> it had something to do with we started releasing these and it might come out about the same. Now, they'd be kind of concurrent with where the releases for the previous, the other game is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I think it was fun. episode 49 or 39. <laughs> I can't remember which one it was. 39 or 49, where this, oh, where the town got, um, yeah, where all this happened. Feels- which I thought was longer ago than what it was. We've done a lot Same since here. then in the, in the villain campaign because we did the yeah. Dragon Horde and then the other tower in the south. Yeah. Um, I had to keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I had man. to keep keeps going through the episodes trying to find where, where all this happened at. I'm like, geez, this is much closer to the very beginning than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's post undead Jeb. Undead Jeb. No, no, it's not. No, you're undead. Yeah, that's you're what undead. I'm it's 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 after oh, Jeb yeah, okay. becomes dead Jeb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, this is the Jeb that stared at the door, waiting like all night long. <laughs> this is you <laughs> waiting. Just watching the door to see uh, if anything I happens. I stand at the door and wait till someone opens the door. Then I do something. No, then I stand on. <laughs> I was like, we all of us slept. And Jeb just stood at the door. Just watched us sleep. <laughs> like yeah, this was actually the first location where I actually cast a Sylvan um, hideaway. Oh, you know, like. What's this? Like, describe the Sylvan hideaway. And I'm like, well, it looks kind of like a fairy like tunnel thing. And y'all were like, just read this the description. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> you know, Jeff, we want to know what it does, not what it's your like, head tells you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then Terrence was like, oh, it's a hobbit hole. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Good time. Well, catch, catch you next time, folks. Good night. Thanks for watching. Listen.